Hey, how's everyone going today? So this video, I got two SD45s going. Um, my blue Conrail by Bachman Spectrum. Uh, uh, there was a couple viewers that interested on the, the info on that particular locomotive. And then I have my, uh, my, my Union Pacific SD45 uh, by Proto2000. I just, uh, I just received in the mail. Uh, there, two, three days ago. Uh, that, that one was new in box, never opened. I had to, uh, I had to, uh, repair the axle gears on it. They were cracked, but the repairs work and the repair worked great. Um, I just, uh, took my soldering iron and, uh, pulled the wheels out of the axles so the cracks would tighten themselves back out and, uh, melted the cracks back together and uh, I've done that a couple times, and uh, it's always been holding for me, and I haven't had any break again yet, but then again, I mean, I, I don't run the locomotives very hard. Uh, I apologize for the extra noise if you hear it. We're starting to get a pretty nasty storm, and I got, I, I put these two little loops here on the sun deck. I usually do my layout here on the sun deck, but it's winter times upon us, and I put it all away. But yeah, so the uh, Bachman Spectrum uh, Conrail SD45, um, after I uh, put some new grease and oil on it, it's working really good. And the, the only issue that I read about with these uh, later run Spectrums are the decoders that they come with. Um, they're rather cheap. Um, it, it, so... I'll describe it as best I can. Because the the coder is the way it is, I have to put a lot more throttle into it to get it going. So basically like it's not going to start going until I got the throttle 3 or a little above 3. And that's the nature of the beast with those cheap decoders unfortunately. But the locomotive itself runs excellent. Uh, there's no problems with the motor. The motor is not noisy at all. The gears are not noisy. It, it's it's fairly smooth. I mean, I wouldn't say it's 100% perfect, but it, it, it's a good running locomotive. And I mean, for... I only paid $60 Canadian for it. It might have been $64. I think it might have been $64 Canadian. I'd have to look at my uh, online receipt. But it was between 60 and $64 Canadian. So, I mean, bane for the buck. I mean, I can't go wrong with it at all. But it, it's it's running really great. And uh, I'll just... Uh, I'll demonstrate... I'll show you the setup. Just don't mind the clutter. We keep some things in here in the wintertime. So, this is... I'm just using an old DCS-50, right? So... Here, I got it at about four and a half, right? At that speed. But. There, I got it slowed down a little bit right there. So right now, it's uh, at three and a half, right? But you can't put it much below three. Because it, it, the power really starts to drop off on it. So here, I got it at three right now. So this is a this is the decoder issue with it. With the, with the cheap decoders on them. So right now, it's at three. And I mean, it's a, it's a decent slow speed, right? I'll see if I can get it go. I have gotten it going a little slower. So I'll drop the speed here a little bit more. Let's see. Oh, there's a, there's a little hill on the road. So I had to speed it up just a tiny bit. Just the way I got the, uh, the carpet set up. And the previous owner, they had the decoder set up their own way too, so it, uh, the, the speed, the acceleration and the deceleration is not instantaneous. But there, I got her back down to three again, and that, that's crawling pretty slow. And I think we stopped right there for a moment. There, I'll just pick it, I gotta put the throttle back up. There we go. Like I say, those turns are tight, too. So, I mean, I got those tight turns on a six-axle locomotive, so it's, uh... 
if you get a turn tight enough, it'll it'll slow right down. But if I if I put it on the outer loop, the outer loop is 22 radius, and the inner the inner loop there's 18. So she kind of kind of getting a little stuck there. But like I say, that's not really uh, the locomotive's fault. That's just the uh, the really tight the tight corners. But I mean, it does go fast. So I'll put her up to I'll put her up to full throttle here. But like I say, the power just doesn't start till three. But that's definitely a decoder thing. So right now, that's top speed. And some of it could be due to uh, whatever the previous owner had the settings up to, right? And uh, unfortunately, another wonky thing about these cheap decoders is uh, I can't get it to read because you gotta do something really weird with them. So here's, uh, here's my program track right here, right? And, uh, oh, I can't even explain this right, but you have to put a, I think it's a capacitor? I don't know, you gotta do something really weird that you shouldn't have to do, but you have to put a, I think it's a capacitor on the, uh, on the rail in order to get the, uh, now this isn't with all of them, but I know this one's having the problem because it won't read it at all, so I can't adjust it. So I think it's a little capacitor you need to put on the rail. Uh, don't quote me. I might be using the wrong term for the little electronic piece you have to put on it, but I did read into it. In order to get the, uh, the, you know, your, your, your power, uh, in order to get my Digitrax DCS50 to read the decoder, that's what I have to do. I just, I might not be using the, the proper name. Like I say, I'm, I'm still fairly new at this. So there, that's that full throttle. And then I'll drop her back down the four. And that's a good, that's a good speed right there. I can I can get it to crawl, really really slow, but I have to put it on the uh, on the 22 inch radius, because that that's pretty tight for the uh, for the six axle to crawl. The fact that it's going around it is pretty good. The uh, those uh, eight I think that's an 18 inch radius, so the 18s are uh, much more suited for the uh, for the eight axle. Nope, sorry, eight axle. What am I thinking for the for the four axle locomotives? Much more suited for the smaller ones, rather than any six axle. But uh, but I'm very happy how the uh, Proto 2000 is holding up with my uh, axle repair. It's a uh, running mint. I just got it running on uh, the DCS 50. Can run a, an analog locomotive. You just put it on code zero zero, and it works great. It's fine. But no, the uh, the Spectrum will run a lot better on the uh, on the outer on the outer track. I'll switch it to the uh, to the Proto 2000 here in a moment. I'm just gonna have to. I gotta tone that down a little bit, and I'll put it on code zero. There. Now I'm controlling the Proto 2000, and it uh. On the outside loop, like it can, it's pretty nice. So I got it, like, we'll get her going at a good creeping speed here. There we go. There, I'll just pop the camera here. But yeah, I got the uh, Proto 2000, I got it working really nice. It's nice and quiet. No unwanted noises. It just does its thing. It's a really heavy locomotive too, like most Proto 2000s are. It's in... Oh, I can't... I'd have to put it back on the scale. But it is heavier than the Bachman Spectrum. Like quite a bit actually. Quite a bit heavier. Um, the Bachman Spectrum does have good weight to it. I'll weigh them again. And then I'll, uh, I'll make a video about it. But uh... Yeah, the Spectrum has good weight to it. The Proto 2000 has even better weight to it. But I mean, still, like, man, six, sixty dollars Canadian. I, I had to get that Spectrum. Had to do it, hundred percent. And I had it going on the outer track there earlier, and it was running even better on the outer one. I can get it the, I could get it the creep just as good as the Proto 2000. No issues at all. 
And I also got a bit of the floor is not even here either. There's quite a <laughs> you can see there's quite a quite a bump on that. Oh yeah, here comes the Proto 2000 again, SD45. Both awesome engines. Really happy with the two of them. Excellent locomotives. I'll get the uh, Proto 2000 going a little faster here. Just up the throttle a little bit. We'll put her up to two. Get her going. Here we get a little close ups here. Well, the rain is starting. Yeah, we're tonight supposed to be getting like 100 kilometer an hour winds and above and like 80 millimeters of rain so should be all kinds of fun well yeah it's nice and warm today though so that's a bonus so I've been out here enjoying the trains for most of the most of the day so far I'm very happy with these locomotives. I I, I, I got a few SD45s. I, they're one of my favorite diesel locomotives. Like, I want to collect them all. I want all the SD45s. Oh, yeah, and if you're wondering about the track, the outer track is Caddo track. And uh, the inner track is... Uh, I, got a, I got a box of... Uh, Bachman Easy Track, so that's the, uh, there's the box of it here. So just, yeah, all kinds of Easy Track hiding in here. Oh, I got some, uh, regular track in there too, but I do got quite a bit of Easy Track in the box. Because in the, in the spring and the summer, I, uh, I clean up the sun deck, get it all cleaned up, and I, I run track all over the place. I, I don't have a table layout at the moment, unfortunately. Just, uh, don't have the space for it in the basement right now, but uh, I'm hoping too soon. I got to rearrange a bunch of things, but in the spring and the summer, I put track all over the place here. It's really really fun. And then I got my little uh, my little work table over here. Nothing too fancy. I got to put all the boxes away too. That's just my little work table. I got to tidy up a little bit because I was just doing some work. But yeah, but I should probably get this video ended. We're at like pretty much 13 minutes. But everyone take care, have yourselves a great day, and I'll have another video going soon.